hi there everyone. Welcome to another episode of Cardwell's Cauldrons here at Geektopia Island. I'm Cardwell. And I'm Kevin. And today, uh, we're just playing another fair deck, which will probably get trounced in the <laughs> randomness that is the Field of the Dead. It's yeah, horrible. Field of the Dead everywhere. But I can't stop playing good green creature decks. Like, they just seem super fun. But uh, of course, before we get into the deck, go ahead and remind you that we do have a Patreon. It only takes a dollar to support us, and we love you very much if you do so. And uh, with this fair deck, it is mono green. And everyone's been like throwing their ideas of what mono green is. And it's called Wildlife Refuge. Just a bunch of random creatures out there coming together and seeing if they can uh, take over the lands for sure. Let's do it. Yes. And the first one, of course, is Gilded Goose, because you're playing green and Land of War is gone. So it's a flying bird, zero two. When a uh, Gilded Goose enters the battlefield, you get a food token. You can tap the Gilded Goose for a food token, or sacrifice a food token, add any mana of any color, which will probably just be green, but for you to ramp up to your big creatures real quick. And it also has one in the green, tap, create a food token, just in case you need to create extra mana, mana later. Yeah, for sure. Gilded Goose is so good. That's good. Next up is our boy Pelt Collector. He's one green for a 1-1. One, one. Whenever another creature you control enters the battlefield or dies, if that creature's power is greater than him, put a 1-1 one, one counter on him. Yep. As long as he has three or more counters, he gains Trample. Yes. There's a slight theme of all these dudes just getting counters and countering up as well. Uh, like this one, Bark High Troll. Uh, two green. It enters the battlefield with three counters on it. So he's a 3-3 three, three for two, which is amazing. Or enters, yeah. He enters with uh, a counter. A, a counter. He's a 2-2. Two, two. It gets a counter. One. Uh, remove a 1-1 one, one counter from Bark Hall Troll. He gains Hexproof until in a turn. So he's just there to survive, hopefully, throughout all the damage that can go through. Next up is the Crab Boy himself. Growth, yep. growth Chamber Guardian. A green and one for a 2-2. Two, two. Uh, it has Adapt 2, so you pay a green and two, and you can put two counters on it if it has no counters. And then... Whenever one or more counters are put on a Growth Chamber Guardian, you may search your deck for a card named Growth Chamber Guardian, reveal it, put it in your hand, and then shuffle your library. Yep. So it's just really good. He alone can almost win the game if, like, you can tempo out really well. Because you're just like, I have a 4-4, now I have another one, and another one, and you just, like, go at it. Yeah, if you've had to play against these dudes, they get really, really hard to deal with. Yep. And I'm sorry I keep playing green, and I have to play this card every time. It's Wildborn Preserver. He's just good. It's so one in a green flash, reach, two two. But whenever a non another non-human creature enters the field under your control, you may pay X. Where if you put X on the counter, you put you put X one one counters on Wildborn Preserver. So he just gets real big real quick. Yeah. So if you have extra mana, you just play like a Gilded Goose for two more. So it's a green and two, and then Wildborn Preserver gets two counters on. Yeah. Exactly. Pretty strong. So turn two, flash them in. Their turn. Turn three, play Gilded Goose or Pelt Collector. Pay two more mana. He's a four four. Swinging in. Turn three. Yeah. Solid. Next up is the Love Struck Beast. It is a green and two for a five five. Whenever it, and it can't attack unless you control a one one creature. So mm -hmm. okay, fair enough. And then Heart's Desire is one green sorcery, create a 1-1 one, one white human creature token, and then you can exile it, and or like that's its adventure side, and then you pay it for its cost, and it comes into play. Yep. So he kind of feels himself, but the best thing about it is he can still block. So if you're playing aggro and you go turn two Love Struck Beast with Gilded Goose, uh, have fun trying to kill this dude, because he's a 5-5 five five that blocks all day. He can also attack, because Gilded Goose is a one or, no, it's a 0-2, sadly. Oh, it's a 0-2. I but thought it was a 1-1. But Pelt Collector is a 1-1. Yeah. So if you just play him afterwards, then you can swing and then have fun with that. Now, this guy is one of the other main reasons why I made the deck. Is uh, Yorvo, Lord of the Garen Brig. He's 3 green, 5, 4-4. Uh, four, four. So he enters the battlefield with 4 one, 1 counters. This is where I got mixed up. And then, whenever another green creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Yorvo. Then if that creature's power is greater than your bow, put another 1-1 one, one counter on, on him. So <laughs> immediately on turn 2, you can have a 4-4. Four, four, and then turn 3, you can have a whatever, a lot, if you just put, start playing dudes on the field. Yeah, he can just get bigger and bigger, and it's yeah. pretty silly. Just keep constantly doing it. And then finally, we have our Questing Beast, because it's just a really good it's green card. super good. 2 green and 2 for a 4-4 four, four with Vigilance, Death Touch, and Haste. It is a legendary creature, thank God. Otherwise, yeah. this card would be too much. <laughs> yeah. 
It can be blocked by creatures with power two or less, and damage that will be dealt by it can be prevented. Yep. And whenever it does combat damage to an opponent, it deals that much damage to target Planeswalker that player controls as well. So it is like a Hydra dog thing. Yeah. And it essentially gets to hit all of the things for everything. Just It's kind of ridiculous. All the things, all the time, for four mana, and thank you. Yeah. Pretty much. Now, with that, we'll go into the spells because we need some type of control. And since we have a bunch of counters, we have Titanic Brawl. It's one in a green, instant. Spell costs one less if you cast targets a creature you control with a 1-1 counter on it. So hopefully it's just one green prey upon. Instant speed. And then target creature you control fights a target creature you don't control. <laughs> Simple That's as that. That's pretty good. Yeah. Next up is Band Together. Uh, green and two. Up to two target creatures you control. Each deal damage equal to their power to another target creature. Yeah, so... Uh, it seems silly, like, this card, what it does. But we pay three mana to kill a lot of things anyway. Mm -hmm. Sure, you need creatures, and it doesn't specifically say you need to, so you can just be one big creature that kills that creature. And then it deals damage, so it doesn't actually fight. So you can have two little dudes kill one big dude. And if they have a big, big dude, you can just make a questing beast kill it. Because it doesn't, their dude doesn't it, deal damage back. Yeah. But questing beast deals his damage and death touch, so you're just like, cool, that dude dies. Just kill whatever. Great, you have 12-12? It's dead. It's dead. Thanks. Super dead. Next up is our girl Vivian, Vivian the Arcbow Ranger. She's three green and one for a four loyalty planeswalker. Plus one, distribute two one one counters among up to two target creatures. They gain trample until the end of turn. Minus three, target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to target creature or planeswalker. Yep. Minus five, you choose a creature card you own from outside the game, reveal it and put it into your hand. So it's just there to, you know, pump up your dudes as they are already pumped up. And uh, to kill something as well, because you need you need kill mm -hmm. a lot. And of course, the refuge of the deck is the Great Hinge. It's a seven green green costs it costs nine a little expensive right, but legendary artifact. This spell costs X less to cast where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. Uh, you can tap it, uh, add two green, you gain two life as well. So no matter what, even if you have nothing to cast, you just tap it to gain two life, and that will add up quite a bit. Yeah. Now, whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a 1-1 counter on it, and you draw a card. So, thank you. Like, that just... Everything you have is a cantrip, and everything just gets bigger constantly. So, it, it gets insane really quick with this guy. Yeah, that, that card's pretty ridiculous, because you kind of got to think about it. It essentially only costs 7. It normally does cost 9, yes, but you have to pay for that, and then you get two back. Yeah, exactly. So, it's always just two free mana there. And essentially, if you have anything that's bigger, like the Lovestruck Beast, you can play Lovestruck Beast on turn three, and this on turn four. And then you can play a two drop after that, a Bark Eye Troll, and now he has another counter. He's a four four. Yeah. And you gain two life, and you draw a card. So it's like insane. Real quick. It's pretty much worth it if you get that dude out early. So like a Yorvo into a Lovestruck Beast into that, great. Yeah. Let's go. You're just, just counters for days and big creatures forever. For sure. Now, of course, uh, we're just running 23 fours. Of course, there's the castle, but it didn't... Uh, dude, I see no point in adding, because we're not ramping that hard. Uh, so we're just doing straight up fours from there. Now, of course, we don't have sideboard, because we don't know how the local meta is around there, and we don't know what's switching around in the actual meta. So we have honorable mentions that maybe will help that into the future. Now, of course, the first one is Veil of Summer. It's one green. We don't have Ranger's Guile anymore, so that makes me sad. Gives your dude hexproof for one. But Bell of Summer for one green. Instant. Draw a card if opponent has cast a blue or black spell this turn. Spells you control can be countered this turn. You and your permanents you control have gained hexproof from the blue and from black until end of turn. So it's kind of correlated to blue black only, but it can hopefully still get there. It's worth every bit of it though. Yeah, yeah. For one green to save your dude, good. Next up is one of our favorite cards in green, Pulse of Marasa. Yes. It is a green and two for an instant return target creature or land from a graveyard to its owner's hand. You gain six life. <laughs> yeah. So when they use all their burn spells on Love Struck Beast, and at the end of turn you gain six and you get it back, they're like, what? No. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Cool. Great. I they always get confused when you gain six life. They're like, that card does that? <laughs> yeah. All right. I like this little guy. Oak Oakham Adver Adversary. It's three and a green, two, three elf. But the spell costs two less to cast if your opponent controls a green permanent. 
So if you're going through, you know, a slight mirror match or whatever, it costs two for two, three with death touch. And whenever it deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. So it's just, you want to block with your big guy or I'm going to be drawing cards for sure. That's pretty good. Yeah, this card is a very, very good card. Next up is the Shifting Ceratops. It is two green and two for a five, four. This spell can't be countered. Mm -hmm. It's got protection from blue and you can pay green and it gains uh, your choice of reach, trample, or haste until the end of turn. Yes. So for four mana, you're just like, I'm big and I'm going to kill you yeah. if I have an extra green. If you have great hinge in play, it, it does more and then you get to give it two different things. Yeah, exactly. Or like Gilded Goose, you wait till turn four and then you, with haste, and then you give a haste and you swing in for five and sorry to fairy you're dead or don't touch me. Yeah. Dude's pretty good just because he got pro blue and he doesn't, he doesn't like blue. Yeah. He doesn't like, he doesn't care. Yeah. Ceratops does not care at one bit. Oh, good old Sierra. But with that, that is the deck. And hopefully you have fun with it. And like I said, it is fair magic. I love playing fair magics with big dudes. And hopefully this will be uh, fun at your local game shop for sure. Uh, the deck list will be down below. And hopefully you enjoyed your stay here at Geektopia Island. You have a good day. Later. Bye. Also, guys, I just remind y'all to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel. And if you want to keep up to date on all our future content, make sure you click that bell. It will give you all the notifications you need. With that, we'd like to go ahead and give a big thank you to all our fans that support us through the year, and especially our Patreon support people. Uh, we do like to give a shout out to our Mythic and Above uh, supporters, and that would be Dwayne Higgs. Thank, thank you, very you very much. much. We love you.